Let me see if I have anything here before. Now, today, and again, in the spirit of transparency, we are releasing uh, these videos. I'm going to very quickly go over uh, a, a timeline. I want to keep, keep in mind that we are um, we're trying to be as transparent as possible. Uh, and so this is the best information we have right now. Uh, and so, so if anything changes, we, we will let you know. Uh, but if we can go to the first slide, I'd appreciate it. So again, this is the current, uh, current status. The gang robber investigation team is uh, responsible for the actual robbery investigation. Uh, we actually took two of the suspects in the custody. Okay, guys, but we're going to use uh, these now. Everybody can step to the side real quick. Um, we have, from the day of the incident of the actual robbery, we have two individuals in custody, two young people. They're both 14 years of age. Uh, the charges that they are that they have been that have that have or have been filed on them will be false imprisonment and aggravated robbery. That's the two young individuals that are in custody. The other young people that are involved in this robbery uh, have been identified, and we're in the process of um, continuing our investigation to actually uh, locate, uh, apprehend them. The stolen Kia minivan that was used. Uh, and believed to be part of this robbery. It was the vehicle that brought the uh, group of young people to the location uh, uh, in the back alleyway and uh, left that day without those kids. That stolen Kia minivan uh, has been recovered. It was recovered unoccupied on June 8th by a member of the Aurora Police Department. So that vehicle has been, uh, been recovered. Again, the 18th Judicial Critical Incident Response Team is currently investigating the officer involved shooting. And if you have any questions on that piece of this uh, of this series of investigation, I would refer you to 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 the CERT team. And again, we now immediately begin our internal affairs investigations when we have a critical incident. That is a best practice and something that uh, that we do now that uh, would have, doesn't isn't done in the past. Next slide, please. Okay, this is a quick timeline of, with some uh, still photos. Let me just be real <coughs> clear. The purpose of this timeline is to provide transparency and some con factual context to the community members, the members of this community that want to know what happened, when it happened, how it happened. Uh, there have been, at that uh, meeting on Tuesday, uh, some more actives were asking questions, and I'll hear some of the answers that we know as of uh, this moment in time. This at, at 4.17 p.m. and, and notice that we have, we have uh, seconds on there. Gang intervention unit sergeant Carey uh, airs to his team uh, and we will, actually re we will actually play this audio from this broadcast at the end of this review. Airs to the, something to the effect I got a quote, I got to get turned around, but five dudes, black juveniles, I masked up, came from the alley, which is where the investigation will reveal is where that stolen Kia minivan is at, which we are uh, almost 100% certain is the minivan that brought the kids to the location and the minivan that was supposed to take them as a getaway vehicle, but uh, they, they didn't quite wait. Uh, it's black jewels all masked up, came from the alley and started running toward the strip mall. Uh, if you look at the photo that's up there, that is from uh, the business camera, exterior camera, and that is actually uh, what the sergeant would have seen, the appearance of the young, young kids, but he would have seen it coming from the alley where the van was at and coming south along the, you know, along the front of the businesses. But I just want to show just, just to see because people are asking, what did they see? Why did he call folks? I, I, we don't need to say anything other than let the community make their own assessments. I think that's really important. <clears throat> Just like, I, I, I got to get turned around, but five dudes, black juveniles, all masked up, came from the alley and started running toward the strip mall. Next slide. Sergeant Carey then says, they're walking south in front of the stores. It looks like to the liquor store. All of them masked up, hoods up, COVID masks. And they're looking around pretty hard. I'm, I'm going to get on primary, which uh, means one likely change from another frequency to a primary frequency, a uh, patrol frequency in that location. Attorney Carey then said, all right, they definitely look like they're looking around. They're setting something up. 
They haven't gone inside yet, but I don't know if they're cased in liquor store or the Mexican place over there. Next slide, please. And uh, then Sergeant Carey actually turned around, uh, made a U-turn, then went into the alleyway, and that's where he spotted the stolen Kia, ran it, and it came back stolen. The Kia uh, drove away, and he went uh, following them. Um, if you look over here, uh, what you're looking at is a interior interior photos from inside the location where the robbery was committed. Uh, on the left, you will see uh, the, the group of young kids, and at the counter with the white hoodie is uh, is, is Jordan. Uh, the indications are the witness statements, the victim statements in there is that young lady that you see behind the register uh, stated that uh, Jordan raised he raised his uh, sweat his his sweatshirt and displayed uh, in his waistband uh, a weapon, uh, that, that, uh, a semi a weapon, and uh, she believed that, you know, she was going to get hurt, and it, he made some comments like, we any problems, some of that effect, and so she did whatever they told him to do. That is the picture uh, right here. In the picture to the right, uh, you still see Jordel, the other kids in there, at the register, and then you'll see a black cop face right here, this is a, 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 a female uh, victim that came in to uh, purchase something and she was um, ordered to stay inside the store uh, by the uh, young kids. Which, who, who gave that order? I don't have the exact uh, information yet, but that is part of the investigation. Uh, and so that is why you see the, the charge uh, against those two kids that were arrested that night of uh, false imprisonment. Next slide, please. Uh, by the way, just so again, what we're putting here in this timeline is what we think are significant, significant points in this video, uh, the body worn camera video, that is of interest to the community and some of the questions that have been asked. But you make your own assessments because we'll release everything uh, at the end of this press conference through these body worn camera videos. At 162200, uh, officers. Snap, who I'll give you his full information in a bit. Uh, you can hear him say, they just shoplifted out of there. If you see this photo to the right, you'll see uh, where that circle is. A young, one of the young individuals, um, it looks like a white uh, jer jer jersey. That's when they ran out as the officers arrived. These are the officers that uh, the sergeant said, hey, why don't you try to start coming to the area, something like to that effect. Um, next slide. <clears throat> so it's at 162200. At 162224, uh, the driver officer who was driving with Officer Snap, Officer Snap, they're both from the gang uh, intervention team. Officer Snap is the passenger officer. Officer Griska uh, is the driver officer. At 162224, this is from uh, the body worn camera of the officers. They pull into <coughs> And what they see, this is uh, Sally Stradell uh, running uh, and holding something in his, uh, around his left hand, appears to be holding something. At 1622.32, Officer Greska, uh, as you'll see on the video when we release it, uh, uh, says stop and get, up, get on the ground. And uh, that was uh, during the, uh, when he got out of the car, exits the vehicle trying to ca uh, get compliance uh, and get uh, uh, Stradell to to stop and comply with her commands. You'll also see that Officer Gretzka comes in where you see that, that back wall right there, missed pushing, attempted to push Jordel uh, against that wall and barely missed, uh, but you'll see that action. At 16, uh, next slide please. At 16.22.35, Officer Gretzka says, uh, this body worn camera footage here is from Officer Greska's, because the officer ends up discharging one round. It's from his body-worn camera. As you can see, he's from a, he's behind, uh, a little bit of a distance from Officer Snap, who's closer to him. Officer Greska, you will hear him say at this point, quote, get on the ground, or I'm going to tase you. But as you can see, and you will see on the video, uh, he's, uh, he's really not an effective range of the taser. If you know tasers, the further are, uh, the prongs, 
they actually they actually do this they actually spread and the spread at that range uh, would have been problematic would not have been effective uh, but an officer usually uh, yells at trying to get compliance and get someone to uh, stop fleeing on foot and try to surrender and get on the ground so you will hear that on there at 1622 36 is officer snap chases this photo here is a uh, it, it is a still shot from uh, officer snaps body worn camera and more or less this time you'll hear he's 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 closed the distance he's closed the gap he's close to uh, tackling uh jordell and you can hear him say uh, get on the ground you fucking idiot um at some point there next slide please at 1622 39 uh, here's a close-up uh of uh jordell and again his hand is uh, in, in in the vicinity of his uh, waistband uh, and I'm not going to characterize it anymore. You can make your own assessment and that will be part of the investigation. Next slide, please. <clears throat> I apologize for the water, but if you're not from Colorado, it is, um, it's, a, it's an issue. You, it's hard to stay hydrated in the state, especially with lights on you. So I apologize for the water. Now, we put these on here um, today, but I want the community to know because people are going to ask, you know, what happened? Did he surrender? You're going to see a lot of different narratives. It's really important for the community to know that what we're talking about is uh, thousands of seconds. It's almost simultaneous, and quite uh, honestly, it's uh, the sound that we put here comes from different, from both, from from different officer. You know, there's two body worn cameras, and so let me just say this: our investigation is ongoing, but we have slowed down these videos. We've backed them up. We are in a controlled, safe environment here, in an air-conditioned uh, building. Uh, the attorneys for the families got to witness the, review these videos, and we backed them up, slowed them down, uh, went frame by frame. Uh, these officers did not have the opportunity to assess threats and to uh, go frame by frame. They didn't have an opportunity to back up. They didn't have an opportunity to do any of that. It is it happened real time um, and so it's really important I really believe that we always have to uh, edge uh, be really upfront and transparent in terms of when these things go I'm not gonna speak for the criminal uh, but all of you here allow seasoned reporters uh, the the objective reasonableness which is going to be internally and, ex and, and administratively of the use of deadly force uh, it, we, we make those decisions we make those assessments backing it up slowing it down um, just remind the community that is not what happened in, in the incident the incident happened in real time it happened quickly and again we put this uh, but we're talking about thousands of seconds and just very quick time frames uh, what you see at 1622 40 uh, officer snap tackles uh, Jordell at 16 1622 42 Jordell says Stop, please, you got me. Um, at 16.22.43, which is, again, a fraction of seconds, Officer Gretzka says, gun, gun, let go of the fucking gun. At 16.22.45, Officer Gretzka says, I'm going to shoot your ass, dude, I'm going to shoot you. At 16.22.50, uh, you hear a single gunshot. Next, uh, next slide. What you see here uh, is uh, the weapon that Jordal was uh, what was, was carrying on his person uh, and it's a still shot from uh, Officer Gretzka gaining control of it and starting to throw it and clear it away from them uh, as um, they continue to uh, uh, try to take uh, Jordal into custody. Next slide please. That's, I think you might have moved too quickly for me to back it up real quick. At 162252 that's that photo that I just described. Everybody get that? Understand that? You'll see it for yourselves in a minute. Next slide, please. At 1622.54, uh, Jordell says, I I'm sorry, I'm done. Help me. Take me to the hospital. Get it. Get it. I can't breathe. Help. 1622.58, Officer Gretzka airs on the radio that shots are fired. Officer Snap is asking him, if he got the gun and he tells him he did. You'll hear that almost simultaneously 
uh, from Officer Snap asking Officer Gretzka. At 162312, Officer Gretzka then airs again that shots are fired uh, b behind the restaurant. He then says, give me medical fast. Officers then ask Jordell for his name and say, hang with me, bud. Uh, there's something that I'm not sure why we don't have it in here, but I just think it's so really important. Uh, at one point, you hear the officer say, get the fuck off the air. That's because officers were talking because we had other kids fleeing, and they wanted to get on the air to call for for medical aid for Jardell. Uh, but you'll see that uh, in there. Um, at 16, uh, 23, 12, Officer Gutzka then airs again that shots are fired behind the restaurant and then says, give me medical uh, fast. Officer, again, uh, officers then ask Jordell for his name and say, hang with me, bud. At 16, 23, 29, Jordell says, they made me do it. I don't know who they were. Uh, they made me do it. And you'll hear some more conversations, but I just, again, do, I know that the critics will try to judge what we have highlighted, we didn't highlight, but at the end of the day, we're releasing everything and folks can determine what's important to them. That's not, we just felt we wanted to give uh, enough of, based on what uh, folks have asked. Next slide, please. Here, uh, uh, Jordell is uh, face down, uh, and I think, uh, face up, excuse me, uh, and what you're seeing is uh, one of the officers actually very quickly trying to ascertain if there, if he had any other uh, weapons and Jordell says something to the effect, no, that's it, I don't have any other. Let me just say this because people always ask, why do officers you know, the weapons on the, they threw the weapon, why are they asking for more, look for more weapons? Because, un, unfortunately, where there's one gun or one weapon, there's uh, other weapons. And for the safety of the officers and ultimately for the individual themselves, you always look for either a secondary weapon, a, a secondary firearm, a knife or whatever, but that's just a protocol. And while some folks don't think that's valid, I can tell you that for a fact that we find second handguns, pistols, knives on individuals all the time. Uh, Jordell uh, sustained a single uh, gunshot wound uh, to his abdomen mid midsection there. Uh, the family uh, asked us to, uh, and, and I'm glad they did, uh, to, to uh, blur the, 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 the wound. Uh, and so uh, that's what you see covering that area. It's, uh, let me just tell you, it's, a, it's, it's, it's very small. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not dramatic, the actual photo, but it's still something that I'm so grateful to them for covering. Uh, next slide, please. It's 1624.57, another uh, gang uh, inter intervention team officer uh, arrives with a medical kit. Uh, you will actually see that officer running with a medical kit from the north, south, and the alleyway uh, to uh, help render aid to Jordell. Uh, with the medical kit, about two minutes after the shots fire was called out, he, he was able to bring in that medical kit. Officer Smith, uh, Officer Snap, checks for a pulse and says he feels one. Other officer puts glove on and starts CPR at, some, at a point. At about 16.27.01, paramedics arrive and assume patient care. Uh, and at 16.29.26, uh, Officer Gretzka uh, wa walks away uh, from officers, and, and, and you can hear him saying in his, uh, to himself a couple of times, uh, God, please be with that kid. Uh, and that is uh, shortly after that, both officers uh, are escorted to vehicles and transported uh, separately by officers to uh, the major crimes unit here and to our headquarters where they, uh, where they were uh, brought. Uh, 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 so, that, that, that is the end of that, uh, the actual timeline. Let me just say that were we able to uh, condense it the four, the, the four minute gap there? Okay, so I, I just want to be, again, transparency. Uh, this, we are releasing the video, the, the two officers by one camera videos at the end of this press conference. That will be the last thing we will do. It will have the officers actions from the time, the two officers, from the time that they uh, that they engaged in responding to this call uh, to the time that they actually get into the vehicle or as they approach the vehicles to be transported back. That is being released. Uh, we, there was a four-minute gap 
and so that didn't have any activity. But I think it's really important for us to show uh, the last piece, uh, our, uh, Officer Gretzka, showing his humanity and the fact you will see how they tr try to uh, save lives, that, that uh, he, he feels this. I think that for anyone to think that he didn't, uh, they'd be uh, silly. So we put the profanity, well, we're going to put the good, the bad, and the ugly, and then we will release everything. We didn't want to four minutes wasting the time of everybody here. Um, we just wanted to just put that out publicly. Uh, next slide, please. This is the weapon recovered at the scene that that uh, was used in the robbery, uh, and that uh, and that's the spot it was recovered. That you will see the officer um, uh, grab and throw. And next slide. And then here, uh, it, you will see uh, a, two firearms. Uh, the firearm on the left is an HKUSP uh, nine millimeter, and the fire on the right is an H HKUSP a pellet gun. And I can tell you that yesterday I confirmed, was able to confirm with my team that he was actually carrying uh, the firearm on the right, which is an exact replica of the firearm he was carrying, uh, the weapon he was carrying. Uh, when he committed the robbery. So we put them side by side there. So can you back it up one more time? So that is the firearm at the scene on the ground. And then the uh, next slide. Go, 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 next slide. Oh, and there it is. And then that's the side by side of the 9mm and the uh, HK USP, which basically, if you look very closely, it says in small print, Cal uh, 45 millimeter. Uh, and you can find those uh, later on. You can find them online. Okay. 